Hey guys, this is Dabson Ishmael. WYSIWYG Web Builder version 17 is here. And as usual, it comes with some newly added um, features, improvements, and functionalities. So in today's video, we are going to take a look at some of these um, added features, especially, and then we'll see how we can even locate some of them in the Web Builder application. So without not talking further, let me just go over to where we have um, all the um, newly added features listed that is in the forum section of the um, the website so the first thing to talk about is the seo assistant which allows you to be able to optimize your website for search engines to be able to locate the seo assistant section of the web builder application once you launch the application you simply go to the page section and then when you come to tools, you have the SEO assistant here, which is able to help you optimize your website for search engines. The next thing to talk about here is robot text. So robot text is also part of the SEO um, features or functionalities, which helps in optimizing selected pages for um, search engines or having those pages shown in search results. So if you come back to the web builder application, and then you go to tools under tools you have robot text here where you're able to configure it so we'll take a look at how to use some of these newly added features or tools in web builder and subsequent videos when you come back to the um, newly added features there is a section for table of content which allows you to be able to add um, table of content to a section on or off your website so if you come back to the web builder application you simply come to the toolbox and then you search for table of content so there you have it you click on it you bring it to the canvas and then you are able to configure it so we'll be looking at videos on how to configure how to use the table of content and let's just come back to the newly added features so there's a section for image hotspot so image hotspot allows you to put an image on your website let me just um, um, have it, click on this so we can see the demo of it too let me just come back from here and show this in a different tab instead and let me go to the demo section so you see how the image hotspot look like so as you can see this is a background image it's a single image and then we have icons and various section which has a tooltip on it so once you hover your case on it it can even be um, links once you hover your cursor you can even click on them and it will take you to different sections of, of the website or different pages so basically the hotspot allows you to put icons at different sections of the image and then be able to add some added information to those uh, um, sections or icons and then also be able to animate them as well so basically those are the hotspot as you can see um, this is the map of the United States of America that shows the various states. So once I hover, then it shows you what is there and so on. Now to be able to locate image hotspots, once you come to the web builder application and then you type uh, maybe hotspot, that is going to bring the hotspot um, to over here where you are able to bring it to the canvas. You, once you draw on the canvas, it's going to ask you to select your image and then from there you are able to configure it. So let's look at the next item here, where it's going to be Loti animations. So Loti animations, as you know, animations, but it's going to be in different forms. So let's just um, show this over here. So as you can see, these are various or different sections of Loti animations. Let me see if I can get a demo here so you can see how that looks like. So yeah, as you can see, this, this animation that happened within the uh, yeah, so that is Loti animation that can be used to display different sort of elements in form of animations and so on. Next on the list will have to do with e-commerce. So there are some newly added e-commerce, um, should I say features as well as functionalities and tools that allows you to be able to build simple you know, and um, very small e-commerce websites using WYSIWYG Web Builder. As part of these e-commerce tools are Vibra Cut, um, you also have eSuite Shopping Cut, and then some improvement to the PayPal Shopping um, Cut as well. 
Now to be able to locate the e-commerce section on the web builder application, you simply open the application and then you head over to tools. Under tools, you go to options. And then when you come to the options section, you simply come to e-commerce. Now this is going to allow you to be able to um, configure the store IDs for the various e-commerce tools that are available. So for eSuite, you just enter your eSuite store ID. For Paddle vendor, you also enter the ID for PayPal. You enter your email here and then snip cut. You enter your key API key stripe publish. You also enter your key here and then for Vibra cut also you do same for here as well. So that is with the e-commerce section of the web builder application. So let's just come back to the newly added um, tools. So as you can see, these are the various shopping carts that is so eSuite, um, you have PayPal shopping cart and then the PayPal buttons. And then we have input mask. So what input mask allows you to do is when you are setting up, let's say a form and in a field, you want to be able to make it easier for people to type what you are supposed to type in the field. So there is some sort of uh, predefined values already exist in the field, depending on the type of the field. So if I click in here, you notice that the date is showing me which section is supposed to be for day, which section is supposed to be for month and year. And when I come to date, it's the same. The phone number, it gives me the various field. Now, when I come to the email address, you notice that it's asking me to type my email, including the at over here, the URL, it's already given me the um, protocol. That is the HTTP over here. So mine is just to type whatever follows from here. So that is the input um, mask, which is added to the form um, too. So to be able to locate this, this is going to be part of the edit box. So once I select the edit box here, and then I come to, um, let me see, uh, that is going to be under validate, right? So you look at the very bottom over here, that is input mask here. So it's going to be part of the form tools, the other form tools that are available in WYSIWYG Web Builder. Let's head over to the newly added um, features as well as tools and see what's next here. Next on the list is range. So range allows you to add um, field to forms that is going to have sort of numbers here. So you can increase and decrease the numbers. Let's just um, take a look at that from here. So if you come to the edit box before, let me just type range here. And as I click on range, you notice that this is where yeah, it, it comes in different forms. So you can have a slider, you can have values and so on. And then as part of that also, as part of the forms, you can also have a section where you um, set conditions using range. So if I come to my edit box properties and I come to conditions, as part of the conditions options, I have range over here where I'm able to specify a range for my conditions. So that is part of the newly added features um, to WYSIWYG Web Builder version 17. And next on the item is date picker. So as usual, date picker, but this time around added focus color and then also added bootstrap date picker mode. So you can have the feel of bootstrap, how um, bootstrap looks like in terms of design wise when you are using the date picker tool. Next on the list is spinner. So spinner um, also allows you to be able to add um, like say numbers, being able to increase the numbers from the right and the left um, and with the web builder. So let me just show you a demo from here. So as you can see, so this is spinner. I'm able to increase this. I'm able to also increase this using either um, the plus and minus as well as using this up and down over here too. So that's basically spinner. So if you are building an e-commerce, it's easier to be able to add spinner to specify the number of maybe items that a customer would want to buy or the total quantity and then it's able to, the customer is able to check out um, based on the e-commerce tools that um, he or she is using. So that is for the spinner section. Let's continue. Um, even before then, let's just come to WYSIWYG Web Builder and locate the spinner too. So you simply search for st uh, spinner, you draw in here and by default you have the up and down so you're able to configure it to be able to match exactly what you need. So that is with the spinner too. Next on the list is going to be um, some improvements that has been made to the login tools, especially the user direct as well as the login and then also conditions. So as I said earlier, there's range which is added to the conditions that we saw earlier. And then there's also um, added set choice action 
this um, lets you chain multiple from combo boxes together. So this allows you to be able to add multiple combo boxes together. And then some improvement has been done to the site manager. So let's just take a look at the site manager. Some of the improvements is allowed pin pages so you can pin pages added uh, recently modified pages so you can see modified pages added new review um, pages so displays a list of responsive pages where one or more breakpoints need to be reviewed due to changes um, to the page or master page so this i think this is a very cool feature in the sense that if you have a page linked to a master page and you make changes to the master page in terms of the responsiveness then it gives you um, sort of like uh, information on the pages that needs also some fixing um, in terms of the responsive aspect. So that is good to know over here. Then you have uh, find ref uh, refers to. So this will display a list of pages that are linked to selected pages. And I also have um, improvements made to um, using the drag and drop rearrange pages. So um, that is within the site manager. And then we have the publish section. So as part of the publish section, um, added ability to set permissions for secure um, FTP and explore. So if you want to explore your FTP from the application, so explore simply means you want to be able to see the files on your server using the um, using the application through the FTP um, configuration part. And I say he's added um, check for invalid file names. So in case you are using invalid file names, in, um, being it's your page names or whatever it is, it is going to um, check that and help you be able to fix that. And then it has added uh, support for browsers, which allows you to publish a preview. Um, this um, settings using your browsers and then it's moved um, when, okay, so there's some improvements. And then also we have preview. So added um, preview currently um, open pages. This generates HTML there um, or pages that are currently open in the workspace. Okay, so this is one of the features that I am very much excited about having a local server built into the application where you're able to publish um, your project, especially PHP related projects or MySQL, those with MySQL to a local server, which is inbuilt in the application. So let me show you um, where to see that. So once you come to the um, web builder application, you come to tools and then you go to options um, you come to publish, then where you have preview, you have local server and then you have preview file over here. So if you select local server, you're able to specify your configurations on how you want it to uh, preview and so on in terms of changing the port and so on. So we'll be looking at tutorials that will show how to go about using the local server publish feature in here. And uh, let's come back to the new set of um, options or features. So we also have some improvements that has been made to responsive um, web design, the HTML. And then we also have um, shape dividers. It says other support for vertical shapes. So now you can add shapes in a vertical way and then added um, offset options so as part of the um, shape dividers. And then you also have some improvements made to the test to over here. And then you have change case and then learn if some also has insert options to context menu or text input boxes and then you have tables and then you also have icons which some newly added icons have been added to it and then there's been some improvement made to the icons and they also have some improvement made to the headings over here it says added text stroke and that's you're able to strike through a text and then also added um, support for background clip text so yeah these are some of the things and then um, a site style manager also has some newly added um, feature to it and then you have the editable content, which also has some improvement. And then cards. Now cards has a lot more um, added features to it. So some of these features is the ability to set default fonts for the entire card. Also as part of that is to be able to use shape dividers. So you're able to use shape dividers and cards. Let's just take a look at the demo here of the card and see some of the improvements added to it. So um, yeah, this is demo one. Let's take a look at demo two. Um, yeah, so these are some of the improvements made to the cards and it's easier to even use them in sort of like a timeline. Um, you know, if you are building something with a timeline that you, put, you want to be able to add times and the rest, it's easier to do that now using the cards. Um, so these are different um, demos that has that done using the card. So you can just browse through them and see what they look like. Now in, 
as I keep saying in the subsequent videos, we'll be taking a look at how to use some of these tools. And then you also have card container, some improvement and added features to it. And as part of that as column gaps, um, and then column gaps, you also have grid mode and then portals mode and so on. So if you open your card container demo here, you notice that we have column gap over here. Now I'm able to also make like a grid with your um, card container. So this shows different cards over here. So depending on what you want to display each card item with, and this can be used for sort of like e-commerce displaying product can also be used for blog reviews and so on. So that is what the card container, um, nearly added features as well as improvements. And I also have some improvements and added features to the layers, layout grid, and then flex container, which are all here as well as um, added um, features to the um, dialogue, as well as the modal layer. And then you have the accordion, you have flex grid, and then you also have some added animations to the animations and transitions, as well as some improvement to it as well. And then Google Web Font has some newly added font, as well as some improvement, um, as well as some um, added features. And then you also have shapes, having some improvements and then added um, shapes to it. So it says, um, added ability to justify line alignment of shape text and then also added experiment tile shape inside so these are some let's just take a look at a preview over here so as you can see these are some of the um improvements or additions that has been added to the shape too and then we also have for text art clip art images so images has improved um image now uses um scr set instead of okay javascript it has lazy load um, script has been replaced and then you have Gaussian player and drop down um, that's drop shadow among others and you also have for pictures new feature a new feature that is um, support for drop shadow so you can be able to set the drop shadow as part of your um, pictures and then you have photo gallery improvement made to it and then you have your site tree over here adding having some added features now for YouTube Vimeo HTML5 video player there is um, support for portrait. So now you notice that a lot of videos on social media, especially for TikTok, um, Instagram, are in portrait mode, which initially the aspect ratio is 16 is to 9, but for portrait is rather 9 to 16. So the reverse form, having your phone in a portrait mode. And for video player also, there's a new feature, which is um, WB.video player. So there's like a new player that has been added um, that allows you to be able to uh, probably perform different um, set of um, functions and then you also have for embed uh, the plugin object has been renamed to embed okay so instead of plugin is now embed and then um, we have some added event options also here and then for link manager so previously known as verify link is now link manager so you're able to use it to verify um, links that are within your um, project and you also have for links and navigation some newly added um, things or navigation and then also some improvements to them and then for the carousel slider you have um, improvements made to it and then some eight new pagination so dot two if let's just take a look at this the pagination initially used to be i think three now there's been eight of them added where i able to um, probably even configure it how you'd want them to look based on what you are working on and um, as part of that you have teamable menu so these are all part of the menu options so you have responsive menu breadcrumb and so on and then says for dark mode added a toggle button to quickly switch between light mode and dark mode which is cool so let's just see if we can find a dark mode here so there's a dark mode and you're able to have um, yeah you're able to configure that and um, what else again so basically these are some of the newly added um, features as well as tools as well as improvements there are a couple of them um, that you may not be able to go through everything entirely but um, those are like um, major um, added ones especially for the features or the tools are some that we've gone through in this particular tutorial so in subsequent videos We'll be taking a look at how to use some of these tools properly to be able to um, help us with designing our websites and visible web builder version 17. so 
I must say Wizard Web Builder has come a very long way. It's made designing websites much easier and fun and with time it keeps getting better especially with the added um, tools added features improvements functionalities and so on so that will just be about it for this particular video thank you very much for watching in case you are new to this channel kindly go ahead and hit on the subscribe button and then don't forget to hit on the bell so that anytime i have a new video you get to see it in case you have any tutorial requests also with version 17 especially of Wizard Web Builder, kindly let me know in the comment section and I'll do well to record tutorials on them for you. That will be about it for now. Thank you for watching.